Good morning, travel family. Welcome back to a new day. Our first full day here in Brussels. It's kind of gray, but at least it's a little warm or slightly warm. So we're excited to hit the ground running. As I mentioned yesterday, I kind of mapped out this loop, which I'll put here on the screen. It's roughly about 1.6 miles. So as you can see, the city center is quite small in comparison to some other European cities. So I think we'll be able to hit up a lot of the major spots that I have planned to see today. And I'm really super excited about. Um, so let's get the day started. Our first stop, which is just across from the Brussels Parliament building, is the Royal Palace. Unfortunately, the palace is only open to the public during the summer months, but catching a glimpse of this majestic building is an absolute must when exploring Brussels. And fun fact, the Belgian Royal Palace is actually more spacious than Buckingham Palace in the UK. You know, just a little fun tidbit as we continue to uncover the charm of this vibrant city. Keeping along the pace on our walking tour, next we visit the Church of Our Lady. Nestled in the charming district of Sablon, this church isn't just a sight to behold, it's steeped in history. Built in the late 15th century, it's a testament to Brussels' rich cultural tapestry. It's a stunning example of Gothic architecture with its soaring spires and intricate carvings. Over the years, it overwent several renovations and expansions, eventually transforming into a stunning masterpiece that we see today. So whether you're a history buff or a fan of breathtaking architecture, a visit to the Church of Our Lady is an absolute must on your Brussels itinerary. Starting to feel better about the day. Do you like the little cafe? Huh? Huh? Oh my gosh. Ah. Anyway, so if you guys want to check out that kind of plaza square, there are a lot of really nice restaurants, especially the one that we ate at was pretty good. Got some beer, a little cheese platter plate. Um, there's a really nice restaurant called Chez. Richard across the street that I have pinned for us to maybe have dinner at while we're here. We'll see. But I'll link it down below if you guys are interested in looking for a place to grab lunch or dinner. Now we're going to continue on with our tour. We're headed to the Mont des Arts, which we kind of got a glimpse of at the top of the hill, but now we're going to see it uh, from a lower level looking upwards and just kind of continue on walking the center of Brussels. Let's go. So not too far from Plaza de Gran Sabron and the Mont de Artes, we made it our way down to the Mannequin Piss, which if I'm not mistaken in Dutch translates to Little Man Ping. And as you can see me just as you can see just behind me, there's a little statue of a man literally taking a piss a piss into a fountain. But what's really funny is that today is St. Patty's Day, it's March 17th, and they have he has his little St. Patrick's Day get up going, so it's very interesting and cute. As you can see, it's very popular, lots of people around, uh, but it is a cute sight to see. Okay, this one is for my fellow chocolate lovers. If you're in Brussels, you simply cannot miss out on indulging in the city's world famous chocolate. Belgium earned its title as the chocolate capital of the world for good reason, with its rich history dating back to the 17th century. 
Belgian chocolatiers have mastered the art of crafting these decadent treats and trust me, forget the souvenirs honey because nothing captures the essence of Belgium quite like a box of chocolates. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. privilege of visiting some really beautiful plazas or squares but oh my gosh this one is probably the most beautiful I've seen um, which is very surprising because I'm very biased when it comes to Plaza Mayor and Salamanca or even the Plaza Madrid but this one is just incredible the architecture is stunning and I don't know if it's because it's rained a little bit. The cobblestone has like this very silky glaze that just adds a little bit of brilliance to the stone. But I'm just like so mesmerized by how beautiful uh, Brussels is. trail but this time we're soaking up the grandeur of St. Michael's Cathedral. Sure it may be our second cathedral that we're visiting today but hey when it comes to gothic architecture Europe reigns supreme. So trust me St. Michael's does not disappoint 
with its soaring spires and intricate details, it is a feast for the eyes. It's our last stop on our itinerary today, but definitely not least and worth the visit. Anyways, guys, that was so much fun. Let's go back. I totally forgot that we were spending St. Patty's Day here in Brussels, but there was a really nice um, Irish pub that we got to hang out and kind of celebrate. And we got to see the kind of parade in the center square, which is awesome. Anyways, guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be kind, leave a thumbs up. Otherwise, I hope you that you learned something new and at least enticed you a little bit to come and visit Brussels at least for a day since it's so close to Amsterdam, two and a half hours or so. Anyways, we're going to end the night here because we're heading back to the U.S. tomorrow. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning into this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. <clears throat> what do you want to say, babe? And if you didn't learn anything, then comment, subscribe, and then I'll teach you something new. I'll teach you something how to learn. Okay, and bye. How to